Wild Edible Plants Part 9. Stone crop are actually toxic, so you shouldn't eat very much of it. It would probably just upset your stomach. The leaves can be eaten either raw or cooked. Young leaves are best. The tubers can also be eaten. Some of them are said to be peppery though. The leaves are reported to have a somewhat astringent and sour taste. Young plants can be eaten raw, but as they get older they need to be cooked somewhat. Greenbrier have edible roots and leaves. The root can be dried and ground into a powder or it can be cooked. It's uh, very high in starch. The young leaves are said to be as good as asparagus. They can be used in a salad or cooked. The small tendrils are supposed to be very good too. The root is used to make a drink called sarsaparilla. It is brewed into something like a root beer. Sow thistles are very good eating. They can be eaten raw when young or as a pot herb when they get older. They get a little bitter when they get older. They're still pretty good. They are closely related to dandelions. They can be eaten in much the same way. They aren't nearly as bitter as dandelions are. They look prickly, but they really don't feel that way. The stems are hollow and they break quite easily. It also has a white milky sap that comes out of it. As the plant gets older, the leaves start wrapping around the stem. Mountain ash is a member of the rose family. It produces edible fruit. The seeds are likely high in cyanide, so you should be careful about that. The fruit also has tannins, so you should eat the raw fruit in moderation. They are sometimes combined with apples when making wines. Burr reed are aquatic plants that live in shallow marshes, ponds, and streams. They have edible roots and the uh, stems is also edible. They both need to be cooked, however. Drop seed are a grass with edible seeds. They can be either eaten raw or cooked. You can parch the seeds and ground it into a flour. They were a staple of the Apache. It is also used as a famine food in places like Ethiopia. Prince's Plume produces edible seeds. Young leaves and stems can also be cooked. They are said to have a cabbage-like flavor. They can be quite bitter and probably require changing the water at least once. You also need to be careful about eating too much of them, especially in dry places because they tend to concentrate selenium. They are actually members of the mustard family. Chickweed are a very common weed. They often grow in lawns. They tend to grow when it's cooler. They can be used as a pot herb or they can be eaten raw. The plants contain saponins, which are mildly toxic. You shouldn't eat too much of it raw. The flowers are really small. The plants are very delicate too. Just a very light pull on them pulls them apart. Squaw cabbage are members of the mustard family. The leaves should be dipped in water several times and then cook it as cabbage. Doesn't quite make sense, but that's what was suggested. Some of them are very interesting and distinctive looking plants. That makes recognition easier. Sea blight has edible leaves and seeds. You can eat young plants raw. The berries are edible, but they're very bitter and soapy. The plants tolerate a lot of salt. They often taste very salty. In California, the plant is considered endangered, so you probably shouldn't eat it. Dandelions are widely known to be edible. Every part of the plant is edible. The roots can be cooked or eaten raw. The leaves get quite bitter when they get older. 
the plant can be especially high in calcium and other nutrients though. You could also blanch the plants by uh, excluding the light from them for several days. That will make them much less bitter. The flowers are used to make dandelion wine. Tetragonia or New Zealand spinach can be cooked as a pot herb or eaten raw. The leaves contain low levels of oxalates, so they should be blanched first and then rinsed in cold water. That would be true if you eat very much of it. It was uh, actually discovered by Captain Cook. He brought the plant and planted it in other places as a uh, cure for scurvy. It grows well in salty soil. Fringe pot are members of the mustard family. The seeds are generally roasted. They are unusual for mustards because they only have one seed per, the, per pod. The pods sometimes do get pretty big. It's normally a small plant. Very inconspicuous. Salsify or oyster plants have edible leaves and roots. The leaves are better when they're very young. The root is high in inulin, so if it's roasted it should get a lot sweeter. That's why onions get sweeter when they're cooked. It's also high in inulin. The plants look something like a giant dandelion plant. Aerograss can be toxic raw. They sometimes contain a cyanogenic compound. The seeds and stem are the edible part. They should be cooked first though. The white base of the plant can be eaten. Any parts that contain green though is likely to have the uh, toxin. The seeds can be parched and ground into a powder. Only the base of the leaf stems should be eaten, not the flower stems. Hemlock are relatives of fir. Tea can be made from the leaves. The edible cambium is collected by scraping slabs of the uh, removed bark. The shavings can then be eaten immediately or it can be dried and pressed into cakes. The bark is a source for tan and for tanning. I think it was Yule Gibbons who said that cattails are the supermarket of the wild. They have very starchy roots. The bases of the stems are very good eating. You just basically grab a hold of the plant and pull real hard. Then the white base of the uh, stems is quite good. You can also eat the pollen. The flowering parts are also edible before they emerge. They can be cooked like corn on the cob. They actually have quite a pleasant taste. Bay laurel are related to the plants that you make um, bay leaves out of. They're actually quite a bit stronger flavored though. The seed is toxic raw, but it can be roasted and then ground into a powder. The fruit actually resembles an avocado. You could actually eat the fruit, but it's, it's very thin and, it, and you have to catch it right at the right time. The seed tastes better if it's, if it's roasted till it becomes like a dark chocolate. Stinging nettle are said to taste quite a lot like spinach. It's usually cooked that way. You need to be careful of the plants, they will sting you. That stinging effect is neutralized by cooking though. Older leaves develop gritty particles that act as an irritant to the kidneys. Nettle is very nutritious. You can make twine out of the stem. Huckleberries can be eaten raw or they can be made into jams and jelly. They can be dried for later use. It is described as quite palatable, but n nothing special. The plants are usually found in uh, shade underneath other trees.